this video lesson, I'd like to continue exploring the Revolve tool with dimensions, and again with a little bit more complicated part. As you look at the part shown here, I'd like to work a little bit more with print reading. So we can also see the TYP, and we know that from the last video, that means typical. So I must have a 2.5 diameter on the front and a 2.5 diameter on the back. I have a 1.375 height here that's TYP, which must mean that both sides of this maintain the same distance. I also have a diameter symbol here, and then I've also got this fancy thing here. If you remember from our whole notes activity, this shows me that it's a counterbore. So I have a hole inside a hole. And we'll get to that one later, but I am going to use the hole tool to do this one for me. I could do it in the revolve, but I think the hole tool is going to do an awesome job. More importantly, I have this B with this circle kind of going around it. It's what we call a detail view, and this detail view is zooming in on this small section so that it's much easier for me to put the dimensions on and make them easier to interpret. So we also have a little bit different section view down here. Instead on the last one where we had a full section view where they cut the entire thing open, here they've only cut open the top half. So now I can see it as a solid model down here on the bottom and a cut open section here on the top. And that kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So I can see what it looks like finished and then see what it looks like inside it as well. So this detail view thing is new and this section view is a different style of section view. All right, do we have anything else that's new? Um, we also have an angle dimension that we've never seen before. So this actually shows me from this center line, which we're actually going to create something similar in on shape. So it tells me from this vertical line over, I have an angle of 25 degrees, TYP. So that must mean that I've got the same thing on this side. So again, it's all about trying to crunch all these dimensions in there. If it's something that's obvious that it should be similar, then we leave it alone and only identify it once. So both of these angles are 25 degrees from vertical. I also have this one up here that's not just a radius, TYP, I also have an X4. That X4 doesn't mean multiply the dimension by 4, it just means there's 4 of them. So every once in a while you'll see something like that that try to help you know that you've got all of them. Um, so there's 2 here and then there happens to be 2 on the other side. So they didn't dimension the other side. And if they don't dimension the other side, then unfortunately what we have to do is anticipate that they're both the same. So whatever dimensions they're providing us here must be a mirror over to the other side. And I think that'll give us a chance to try to use that tool as well. All right, so how are we going to start this one out? Rectangles, we're going to start off with some triangle. What? I'm actually going to try it with the line tool, only the line tool all by itself, and we'll see if we can't get it to work. So I'm just going to kind of freehand this one as I see it. All right, so we're going to hop over an on shape. I'll create a new sketch on my front view, and I'm just going to try to freehand it. And again, I'm ignoring everything from the center line or the revolve axis down. I'm also ignoring that counterbore that's there. So I'm only drawing what's up into here. And that little line back there is not in that same plane. So I'm only focused on kind of where these section marks are, where it got cut. All right, so we know it comes forward, it goes up, goes in at some kind of angle, goes straight up over, up. I'm going to ignore the two pulley parts, so those little grooves that the belt goes into, ignore them. They don't exist yet. I'll go down again, and it actually does link onto there. So if you want to go ahead and link onto that one, that's fine, because again, I have this 0.875, and that must be the same on both sides. So if we want to go ahead and link that on, we can. Go ahead and come in. Same thing with that one. That should be the 1.375 down. So I'm going to go ahead and tell Onshape that those two are directly across from each other. This one then comes over, down, and then I do want to connect straight back to that. Okay, so that's it. That's everything that I see. Um, no rectangle tools or anything. I could have, but we'll see if we can't get this done with just the line tool. All right, so what can we put on there first? Um, let's do this three and a half and two and a half. Let's see if we can't get those two on there. Um, well, I guess we're going to also need this quarter. So let's just start with the three and a half. So from front to back, we have 3.5, and it should auto resize everything that we've got. Good. So if our proportions are decent, then this should work pretty well for us. All right, what else do we have? 
Okay, so the whole disc itself, the main part that holds the belts, is two and a half. So from here to here, we have a distance of 2.5. Great, and I'm actually going to scoot that up just a little bit, because I've got some other dimensions that are going to go in here. All right, what else? Um, the quarter. So from the main face, or the back of it, in to our pulley, uh, that's a quarter. So from here to here, we have an offset distance of 0.25. Okay, good. Uh, we've taken care of the majority of the easy ones. Let's see if we can't take care of like these two up here. So 0.875 is just the outer ring and then it drops down before the angle of 1 and 3 eighths. So 7 eighths here, 0.875, and then 3 eighths down to here. Or 1 and 3 eighths. Okay, good. What else have we got? Um, we've got a full diameter of 6, and then we've got a front and back diameter of 2.5. Let's take care of the 2.5 first. Okay, so this time my axis is laying this way. So I'm going to click here and here. That's going to be the front and the back, 2.5. So 2.5 divided by 2. Enter. And I've got to do the same thing on this side because I didn't tether these two together. So this one's going to be identical. 2.5 divided by 2. Okay, great. Let's see if we can't deal with this 6. So all the way from the center up is going to be a radius of 3, diameter of 6. So 6 divided by 2. Okay, we're getting a whole bunch of it to start to be blue. Um, I'm going to hit escape and see what I can drag around. All right, so I need that middle part to stop moving around. Is there anything that can help me with that? I see this 0.75 here, so from the face of the pulley in to that little neck should be 0.75 TYP, so it must be on both sides. So this little guy must be 0.75, and then the same thing on this side. Okay, let's do it again. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to try to drag something around. So what can still move around? Um, just the whole part. Can anything else move around? No. So why can it still move around? Well, because I actually started in the middle of the part and started working my way around. I'm going to see if I can't take one of these corners, either this one or this one. I'm going to see if I can't drag that over to the origin. Great. At least it looked like it locked onto it. Let's see if it did. It did not. Um, so I'm going to see if I can't force that. So I'm going to grab my coincident tool. I'm going to click on that corner and see if I can't force it to lock onto the origin. Um, let's undo what we did a minute ago and see if we can't force it to happen this way. So coincident from here to here. A coincident constraint cannot be added to two points from the same curve. Oh, well then let's see if we can't just do that. Let's just do a coincident between this line and the point. Oh, well, there we go. That's all we needed. So it just didn't like it if I was trying to grab this bottom line and lock it onto it. Since the bottom line was already kind of locked onto it, it didn't want me to force it on it again. So it was doing it a second time. But I could do the vertical line locked onto there. So not only was the bottom one now locked on, now this one is too. Okay, again, the only reason I really wanted to do that was see, is it black? And it is. So awesome. All right, so now let's see if we can't start focusing on those little grooves up there. So we'll zoom in a little bit. We'll see if we can't focus up here. All right, so manually, I'm just going to draw it. So down, over, up. Good enough. Let's see if we can't start throwing some dimensions on there. Okay, so depth. We're looking those grooves, or the tooth looks like it's a half inch deep. So 0.5 from the top of this down. We have 3 eighths of an inch over is where the groove starts. So 0.375 there. And then an additional chained dimension of 3 quarters. So 3 eighths and then chain to another 3 quarters. So from here to here, 0.75. Okay, awesome. So now what we need to do is we need to get these things to be the right angle. And right now I don't have a line down here in the middle. And I'm just going to make one. So I'm going to grab the line tool and I'm just going to kind of make it go up a little bit. I'm not even going to make it go all the way up. Uh, I'm just going to make it kind of go up. All I really want it there for is that 25 degrees. So from here to anything vertical, yeah, I probably could have used this one down here too. And so that's how you use an angle. You just click on one line that's not 
parallel or perpendicular to something else. And then another one, and it will allow you to assign an angle, 25 degrees. And we'll do the same thing on this one. So from here to here, um, I may need to go ahead and drop that in a little bit. So I'm going to grab that and slide it in so I can get the correct 25 degrees. So 25 degrees. Okay, awesome. So all of that's black. That line right there, that dot is blue, that's just because it's not locked onto anything. And I'm just going to leave it kind of like it is. Okay, so now I could redraw this exact same thing over here as a mirror. Or I'm just going to use the mirror tool. I'm going to make a line. And I'm going to find the middle of this. So find that little box. And I'm going to go up. And that is going to be the line that I'm going to mirror this whole tooth across. So mirror. I'm going to select my mirror line, which is going to be the line I just made. And then I'm going to highlight everything that I've got. And awesome. So that has done all the hard work for me. So I've taken care of one and made it to the other. Okay, so everything is still black except for that dot, that dot, and that dot. And honestly, I don't care that they have any length to them. Um, they can just sit like they are. I could go ahead and turn them into construction lines, um, but... It really doesn't matter. So, all right, what else have I got? I've got some fillets. So radius 0.125 TYP times 4. So there are four of them. So fillet, this one and this one, with a radius of 0.125. Enter. And I go get all four of them. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so again, that x doesn't mean multiply it by 4, just means there's 4 of them. Okay, um, I honestly couldn't be happy with that. I think everything is black, everything looks good. I feel like we're ready to revolve. I don't think I'm missing anything but the counterbore. Oh, no, it doesn't look like it. So if there is, we'll go back. So I'm going to revolve. It looks like it picked everything this time. I do not want this one and this one, so I just click them to release them. I'm going to revolve around this bottom line. Sweet. That is really, really cool. All right, so we have this pulley that's got these complex V-shaped grooves in there that these belts go into. And the last thing we need to do is put that counterbore into there. All right, I think we can do this. All right, so we've already kind of played around with holes. It's a sketch. I'm going to look directly onto it. And a minute ago, I turned off my origin. I'm going to go turn that back on. Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to turn it back on. So I'm going to use a point, and I'm going to click the origin. All right, so that should have put a point right there for me so I can use that with my hole tool. Okay, so now I don't need the origin anymore. I just needed that point. All right, so hole tool. I'm going to click my little dot that I just made, and it is a counter bore. It is a through counter bore. It has a main diameter of 1. It has a counter bore diameter of 1 and a half. And it has a counter bore depth of a half. And I select the enter on that to accept it. And that should be the entire part. Awesome. Again, make sure you change this to a unique color, some kind of color that's just for your part. Make sure you come down here to the bottom to get your mass properties. Click on the part, and then you should get everything for your volume and your surface area so that we can see if it was actually drawn correctly. Awesome. Uh, we've got one more part to do, and I will see you in the next video.